Hey everybody, in this video we are going to be taking a look at my replica Harry Warden or minor masks and setups from the My Bloody Valentine movies. So on the left here we have the setup from the original film, on the right here we have the setup from the remake. Now I'm filming this a little bit backwards, I have gone and done unboxings and all kinds of stuff as I put these two together and that is going to be what follows in this video so if you're really interested in all the gory details of putting this thing together and how I source all the parts and all that stuff, stay tuned. But if you have a short attention span and you're just here to see the parts, I'm going to run through everything real super quick and just do a quick rundown of what you need to put together displays like this. So two things sure between both of these, they are both are on kind of generic Amazon bought male mannequin and busts, upper torso, heads, whatever you want to call them. They both also have black nylon balaclavas. Both were just the cheapest and easiest I could find on Amazon for display purposes. So the actual parts that are unique to the mask, the one on the left here we'll start off with for the original movie. There's a MSA Chemox Rebreather mask on the front that has been modified. Comes with one length of hose. There is a second length of hose, which is just kind of a generic gas mask hose. The helmet is a MSA Comfo cap. The light is a Kohler wheat lamp. It is the black box back here as its battery case. And you can see it comes up over to the top. There on the left hand side, you can see a black box behind it. That is an MSA self rescuer that has also been modified. So those are the basic parts for the original. For the remake here, we have a GP7 gas mask that has been modified. Another MSA Comfo cap, another Kohler Wheat Light, but a different model. You can see it's a red box. It is a more modern model of the lamp. Multiple lengths of gas mask hose coming out of the front. And then here on the back side, what the mask plugs into is actually a made item. It is a combination of parts from the gas mask hoses, a binocular bag, and a can of acetone. So that's the super quick dirty rundown of these guys but stay tuned to see the full build of these setups so i assume at this point in the video we're jumping back in time because this would be a boring ass place to start but uh this is the beginning of the project here this is a just a mannequin head plastic mannequin head i got off amazon and then i have a kind of black nylon balaclava that goes over top of it really inexpensive piece not matched to anything in the film i don't think it needs to be at all so first easiest piece i had to make one of the last pieces i bought for the remake set but the first one i really had in my possession outside of the balaclava is this canteen piece kind of thing this is what the hose coming out of his mask plugs into and as i was going through the reference in the movie and all that stuff i could not figure out for the life of me what that was i was searching a bunch of different mining equipment listings on ebay and stuff i just could not find a canister that looked like that they all were mostly cylindrical or round or whatever but i reached out to chuck ryan cosplay who has an amazing cosplay of both versions of the miner harry warden whatever you want to call him and he linked me to a horror hound article horror hound magazine I think it was issue 19, came out in late 2009, I believe, and it had a full breakdown of how to put together a My Bloody Valentine remake costume. And the thing they noted for this is this was a thing made by the production out of a can of uh, linseed oil. Once I saw that, I'd kind of been thinking it was similar to cans of acetone I had in you know my stuff for making props or whatever, and it's the same can, basically. I pulled the little tab out of the top here to uh, open up the hole here. Once I get the hoses, the connector will be JB welded to the top. I painted this with a flat black, it's the camouflage line from, I think from Krylon. It has a really nice flat black. I primed it first, did a flat black paint on it. What I should have done was sanded off the logo on it because I wanted to add some weathering to it and I actually had to paint on the weathering as opposed to just actually sanding it because it was going through the blue paint underneath as opposed to the silvery color. I guess it could have gone further and gotten to the silvery metal, but I think this worked. I did some kind of like dusty looking stuff on it and then some kind of bright silver where it's scuffed up. The edges up here have legit weathering because the top was silver and in the back i didn't do quite as much on just to give myself that option but really you're not going to see much of this in the display because it's covered from about here down by a pouch now for the pouch 
I don't have exact reference for that either, but the recommendation in the article was to use a binoculars case, and I found this one on Amazon. It is a perfect fit for the can as it is now. The can stops right about the top here, the dimensions everywhere else are pretty perfect, but the can does stick out above the top, but there's none of these extra like top flaps and Velcro and stuff. So I'm gonna be removing all that, chopping this down, and making this the pouch for the uh, the breathing canteen back there. All right, so that was a pretty quick and easy change up. It's looking a little rough because I tried to do some glue on the sides, but I'll probably go and weather that up a little bit. I should kind of like the stains it left on here, but it's just, you know, you can see the, uh, the glue splitting there. So basically cut down the top and then used contact cement and I took the top part that had the, the nice finished edge on it and just glued it back up at the top so that it looks like it's intended to look that way a little bit. And I had to re-glue the straps in the back as well. They buttoned at the bottom, but at the top they were sewn in, so I glued them down. I tried to glue down this kind of edge here, but it became too narrow at the bottom for the can to, to go in nicely, so I uh, kind of have to leave it a little baggy it seems but overall I think it looks all right. I mean, it's really just gonna be a background piece here. All right, so our next piece is in. I kind of pre-unboxed it just so that would be easier to get out here. And that was the most unimpressive unboxing I've ever done. This is the stuff that I'm dropping. So that's the MSA Comfo cap. This is the hard hat they used in both the original and the remake. This is a modern version of it, so obviously the old one would have used a vintage one. I assume they probably used to be metal. This feels like plastic. I'm assuming back in the 50s and maybe even the 80s it was not plastic, but this will serve its purposes. I'm gonna weather this up. There is a piece of black duct tape that goes here on the side, and it's got a little strap back here for the polar wheat light to thread through. So yeah, get this on the mannequin. So that's kind of it. In the movie, I believe they do not use this under webbing piece. It's basically the part that kind of adjusts to your head. I think they actually just Velcroed the hat down onto the gas mask. But for right now, I'm gonna use that because there's nothing really to keep it on and this mannequin head just kind of swims in the hard hat if you put it on by itself. So until we get the gas mask, it's gonna sit like this. It's also just slightly too big to fit in there perfectly. So uh, it's a, gonna be a tight fit, but I don't think anything else protrudes deeper than the brim of this hat. I may be wrong. If that's the case, it'll have to live somewhere other than in this cabinet, but I'm hoping it can live in this cabinet because it would look really damn cool. So I went ahead and weathered up the helmet here. It started off with just uh, taking some rough grit sandpaper, kind of going over all of it, getting it so it's not quite as shiny making sure especially to hit kind of the high points or the points that would be more exposed. And then you can see these deeper gouges in it. Um, I actually just went and scratched it against the uh, concrete outside. So I may do like a black wash in those. I think maybe took, I don't think it's the paint off the ground, but it did kind of get this white texture and it should all be black, I think, but we'll see. Uh, I'll figure that part out, but. I think it did give it some nice character. I also added the black duct tape that's here on the side in the film, so that is movie accurate. It's funny because I found a picture on a site that was a, a prop site, like screen use props. It had multiple holes around the brim here. And at first I thought maybe they took these out, drilled out these snaps that connect to the, the lining inside, but the stills from the movie look like these are still intact, so I'm leaving them there. I didn't see the holes. The light's gonna be here anyway, so it's gonna really hide that part. So I don't know what that prop, supposedly screen used prop was, but it had extra holes for some reason. But this is where it's gonna sit for right now, unless I go and you know, make these darker scratches up here. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And I did go look a little further into what the original hats were made from. They look like they were fiberglass. So I, I would assume for the remake, they were probably gonna use plastic because that probably would have been more easily available. I mean, I bought this right off Amazon. So I assume, you know, 11 years ago, it wasn't that much different. Probably not Amazon, but uh, you know, they got it somewhere where it was uh, easy in the current version. Cause they don't really look very different, at least, you know, in a photograph at least. But I think if I do the original Harry Warden at some point, I'll probably still do a plastic hat as I mean, there's a texture to it. You can kind of see like in photos on eBay and stuff, but A, I don't know if, you know, the 81 movie, I guess it would be possible that it could have been a plastic hat and just weathering fiberglass has me a little apprehensive if I was gonna go down that route. So I kind of feel safer just weathering up a plastic hat.
I am getting excited. We are finally getting somewhere with this display. I mean, not that we weren't, it's just a slow pace. Everything's basically on its way to me. It's just a matter of getting it all in place. But we now have the Kohler Wheat Light, which is the lamp that they used in the remake, actually in both movies, as the headlight of the mining outfit. So there is that clip up here at the front of the Comfo cap. This just slots right onto it. The cable goes across the back. There's a little tie in the back that holds that cable in place. And that leads to this red box here in the back left. Now these look to be well used Kohler wheat lights. So they are covered in a beautiful, just disgusting look. I don't have to do any weathering to them, which is kind of nice. I like weathering stuff, but that natural gross look is hard to capture and it's just very satisfying. This thing has some great dents kind of in the case to it and it just looks grimy and gross. I am going to go ahead later, I'm not doing it right this second, but a little later I'm going to go in and actually pop open the battery because the battery is all dried out and non-existent. I'm just going to dump the contents out of there because it's just a bunch of probably gross dried up acid and stuff that just needs to go. So that's all going to get dumped out and I'm just going to have the shell. And if you can see, I open up the other door here, here on the right, this was a two piece lot on eBay that I picked up and it had the red boxed Kohler wheat lamp and the black box. Same basic light, tube, all that stuff. The black box though is what was used in the original film. So. I actually have both Harry Warden lamps taken care of with this display. This one's got some great weathering on it too, like the top's all kind of crushed in and stuff. I really dig how, how ugly these things are. I am gonna try to get rid of the stickers on it. Uh, they're cool looking, but not movie accurate, so I'm just gonna try to scrape them off. I don't know if goo gone or sand them off or whatever, but I'll do what I can to try to get those stickers off of there and just have a plain old box. I'll do the same emptying thing with that one, but that puts us very, very close to finishing off this bust here. Next thing coming in is the gas mask itself and along with some extra hoses. And with that, really everything from the neck up on the costume will be set. So the process of emptying out one of these batteries is a bit daunting and I highly recommend not attempting this unless you feel confident that you can do this safely. While doing this, I had safety glasses, a respirator, and gloves on. And even with all that, I felt like I needed a second layer of all three of those items because it's just kind of a gross process with some potentially hazardous materials inside of the battery. These batteries are sealed and not really meant to be opened, so please be careful if attempting this. So the easy part was taking the lid off. I believe you have to take this off to charge the battery because I don't see any other means of charging it. It just simply unscrews with two screws on one side and you pop the lid off. There are electrical connectors connecting down to the bottom of the battery itself. You could loosen those up and pop them off and this will allow you to remove the lid with the connected light completely. From here, the best method I found was to take a Dremel with a cutting bit and cut away the clear acrylic top giving access to the two battery compartments inside. One side is the positive, the other side is the negative. There are a couple little metal bits sticking out the top for the connections, so you need to work around these as well. Once these are clear, there are little bulbs that connect to the windows on the front side of the box. I believe these were for checking the level of acid within the battery. I took a small saw attachment on my multi-tool and cut these off, which allowed a smooth access to the deeper contents of the battery. I assume when these were new and the plastics were not as brittle, the front lenses probably could have been popped out and you could have saved this whole bulb assembly, but everything's pretty fragile at this point, so this was the best way I could find to getting to the stuff underneath. Once that's gone, everything inside is just kind of one big glob of battery contents. As I mentioned, this is old. The acid is all dried up, so it's not like it's in a liquid form where it could harm you in that respect. I'm assuming the dried up stuff is still pretty caustic, so I am taking every precaution I can to avoid skin contact with any of that. So my initial instinct with taking this apart 
was to start chipping away at the dried up contents and dump it out in little flakes. This was the wrong impulse. It actually can kind of all come out together. There are some metal rods you can kind of pry against to try to pull up all of the inner contents as one solid chunk. The method I found that worked best was to kind of tap or bang the box on my workbench and it slowly shifted all the contents upwards. At one point I found I hadn't cut off that bulb piece cleanly enough and I had to go back in and clean up that so that it was able to slide past the cutoff bit there. But once it got close to the top, I was able to reach in with some pliers or a screwdriver and kind of start prying the bits out. And they all kind of came out fairly cleanly together. There were a couple straggler bits, but I was able to get all of them out safely. Once the box was empty, I went ahead and started working to remove these stickers. These are pretty dried up and they appear to be like a vinyl sticker, so they're not very easy to peel off. The main logo on the front was just a sticker, like a normal sticker, and then the other ones looked to be a reflective sticker. I soaked everything in Goo Gone and tried to scratch it off just using some friction with a paper towel, but that really didn't do much of anything. So I ended up going in with multiple bits, a little like razor blade kind of thing on my multi-tool and a screwdriver and even some sandpaper and just tried to take it off. What I realized is that the hardest part was the upper coating. There was kind of a clear coat vinyl sheet over top of it all. And then once that came off, the stuff underneath chipped off pretty easily. But I was never able to get any kind of full sticker removal. Even if I could start peeling up a piece, no matter how gentle I was, it would eventually just rip after a few millimeters and I wouldn't be able to get much off just by doing it that way. So it did take a lot of time and patience to remove all of this stuff. Once the stickers were fully removed, I went ahead and cleaned the whole thing off with water just to make sure there was no internal gunk left over and to get the copious amounts of goo gone off the surface of the box. All right, surprising double box day here. So what we've got here is the, and I think it's another MSA piece, the Self Rescuer. Let me see if I can unwrap this thing from its sandwichy fresh containment. This is in the original 81 My Bloody Valentine, what the hose from the gas mask or the rebreather to be precise goes into. So this is not intended to be something used like that. So we'll actually take a little bit of modification to get it looking like the movie. So there we go. Basically, this was designed, it's got this belt loop back here, and I guess there's a mask inside or something, like a little face mask. And this has like an emergency oxygen supply for a short period of time, I believe. I'm not an expert on this mining gear in the least, but it is MSA though. <laughs> I got that part right. This would be like, hey, I am gonna die if I don't get some air, here's some air. Here's a, I think it was like maybe a couple minutes worth of air or something. So the one in the movie, they drilled a hole on this side because you can clearly see this little logo plate cleanly. So a hole goes on this side. This whole thing's gonna be painted black because that's how it is in the movie. Though it does look really spiffy being all nice and silver. There you go, you got a date put in service there. It's kind of cool. So I'm gonna probably empty this thing out because it's fairly heavy and I'm guessing there's a lot more inside making it heavy. Plus I got to drill that hole and I want to know what's on the other side of that area before I stick a drill bit through there. So uh, I'll have to contaminate this thing, but it'll be, it'll be cool looking. Oh man. Okay. So I thought this box was way too small to hold what it's holding. I made two orders from the same Etsy seller for parts for the remake setup. And this is the first one I ordered before learning I had to order some extra tubes. There we go. This is the model of an actual gas mask, not a rebreather, a gas mask this time, used in My Bloody Valentine 3D. So this is a, I believe it's a GP7 is the model number. If that's incorrect, I will fix that. Some mods are required on this as well. We have this little bit here in the front. In the movie, they put it here on the side and uh, the hose, which is in here, the tube comes out the front. So I have two more lengths of this type of hose on order. So basically this will need about that to go to the belt. One end of this, this end I think, 
will actually get stuck onto that canteen bit I made, the thing that's made out of an acetone can. And uh, that's how this is all set up. So a little bit of work to do on this, but holy cow, I've got my first like major, major piece. Like the Comfo cap, the, the Kohler wheat lamp, those were cool. This, this is getting somewhere. Okay, so this is purely temporary because it's gotta come off so I can, you know, do everything else to it. But that's just a quick look of what we're heading towards, or at least somewhat of what we're heading towards. I am so excited, this is so cool. So yeah, I'll make those mods next. Definitely wanna get at least one length of this. I mean, I think once one length is on the front, it's probably the hard part, and then connecting the subsequent one should be pretty easy. I actually think I need to order another one of these for my original one. But now that I have a hose, I can make sure it's the same hose once I get the original. But uh, I think it'll be easier to figure out, like, maybe something I can buy stateside. This is from Lithuania. <laughs> Um, which makes sense because it is an old Russian gas mask. It doesn't make sense this is going to come from like that area of the world. So it's kind of neat because you know the original is very much steeped in like Canadian and American mining stuff and it was very authentic to what people were using in that actual area and then this kind of just has this whole other part in the world type thing. I don't know. I find that interesting, if nothing else. So there is some steps to go from here beyond what I already talked about. I found out I have the wrong Kohler wheat lamp for this mask. The article I've been going off of, the one that was provided to me, that was been insanely helpful through this whole process, that article out of Whorehound Magazine, issue 19, showed this lamp. So I just blindly assumed it was the proper lamp. It is not. There is a slightly, I believe a slightly more modern version. It has the black top on it. That is the one used in the remake. This one is just like a red orangey version of the one used in the original. I know the original is correct, but this one for the remake is actually slightly different from what we have here. So I actually have that coming kind of unintentionally. I bought a lot that has the original mask and some other parts and that was one of the pieces that came with it. So it's not really even a huge deal because I've got one coming that I kind of had to buy to get some of the other stuff I wanted. So that all is going to work out just fine. Okay, so these clips on the GP7, I was having some trouble getting them off at first, and really I couldn't film just because I was so in the way of the mask trying to figure it out. But basically, there's these little spring clips that go around the seals, and they have to be tight because they're supposed to keep gas out, but really I just got a, a flat blade of a flathead screwdriver under here and popped it up, and it came off that little hook there, and then... Now it's, you know, loose, and now I'm concerned about getting to snap back together safely. But don't go prying 800 different ways on this. Just pop it up and it'll, it'll come right off. Okay, so once you remove the two clips, you can pop the pieces off. The little, I think they said it was a straw in the front here. So that's what that is. And then the piece on the sides. You can see they're very different. This has an exterior thread on it, and this has an interior thread on it. So you're... I guess straw piece that came off the front, the part that was right up here, has an attachment so it will screw on those exterior threads. The article in Horror Hound says to cut this off, but it's just seated into the rubber. So I don't see any reason why you couldn't just pop it off like I have here. It just is, see this lip here on the edge is seated into the groove inside the rubber here. And then it takes a little messing with it, but you should be able to get that to slide right over the side tube and then once I get it on there fully you have that piece at least how it is in the movie and I apologize if this is kind of an awkward way to show all this I just realized like as I was going through making these setups and getting the parts I needed this horror hound article is the best consistent one place source but even that has issues so I just want to try to document everything I can so that the next person who goes and tries to does tries to does this, tries to do this, maybe they have an easier time. Or maybe somebody looks at this and goes, hey dude, you totally screwed that up. You should have done X, Y, and Z. And then I can learn from that. So there we go. Looking at my reference, I think it kind of points back like this. It might point a little further down, but I mean, you can kind of kind of twist it a bit once you get it in place. So we're going to call that good for right now. And then we'll put the 
flip back on here. All right, so a lot has changed since last we looked at this thing. My urge to film this all has kind of gone by the wayside as I struggled a lot getting the mask to kind of come together. And I don't know if this is the final form or not really. So switched the straw bit over to the side here and put the hose in the front. This kind of was a hodgepodge of multiple pieces. So that's the ring that was initially up there. And then the drinking straw adapter with the threads kind of stuck out the front. Now what I saw some people doing was some weird adaptation of the screw piece that was on here originally that connected and then this other bit. But looking at stills from the film, I don't see the big black plastic chunk in here that people were having with that setup. So I got this, this is a slip lock washer. It's like a plumbing piece. It needs to be weathered of course, but I got that. That was in the Horror Hound article. And that basically just threaded right onto the existing threaded piece in the front. And I snapped that clip back on and it's pretty solid. I did poke out, there was a little grill inside here that held the, the flapper valve thing for the breathing mechanism. I removed that, or I removed the flapper valve and then I basically punched out the center of the hole that was there. And I just kind of forced the tube through it. I was trying to do some weird thing where it was like, this is a part that's inside the connector for the hoses. I was trying to use that and have it like stick around here, but it was really awkward to get it to thread on. I realized if I just punch it through, the ribbing on here kind of holds it in place. So let's see how that works out. That is more or less this right now. I'm working on the, put the other screw end on top of the canteen piece. So once that's dry, that'll go on here with everything else. I only have two lengths of hose. I think it's supposed to be three. I need to go back and check the movie, but basically here where they connect, I just took the ends off of the tube. There is a piece of, I think, three quarter inch PVC pipe in there because I wanted to keep it so that it was hollow throughout. I wrapped the PVC pipe in black electrical tape just in case you were to see any of it through the gaps there. And then some hose clamps are holding that all together. The thing I read, I thought said to use one inch. I think it was wooden dowel, but I wanted to have something hollow in there and one inch PVC pipe didn't want to go into the tube easy. So I didn't want to force anything. I don't know how brave this may or may not be. I mean, it seems like it's nice and springy still, but you know, this thing might be pretty old. I'm not really sure what year this was made. I think something I read said they were made in the 90s, or like, the originals were made earlier than that, I think, but I think these replicas were made in the 90s. And you can see Chucky in Harry Warden's eye. <laughs> it's kind of cool. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's supposed to be three lengths of hose, but I just have two for now. I did also, I guess that was the other big change. I moved them up here onto my shelf because they were not gonna fit in the cabinet. They were just not fitting in there anymore. Too bulky with all the hoses and boxes and just, it's a lot of equipment. This is more or less how it's gonna sit for now outside of switching out the light. When that comes, it should be tomorrow and uh, getting the canteen back there, but we're getting close. I may do some weathering on here as well. Add a little blood and definitely grime this part up with nothing else. So in this box, we have pretty much everything else I need to finish out these displays and a little bit more to be quite honest. I've just opened up the top flaps just to make it easier on camera. I have not dove into this box yet, so here we go. Start off with insulation foam, which for most people would be trash, but I could actually use this for other projects, so that, that's kind of helpful. So, right up top, we've got the My Bloody Valentine Waxwork Records release. So this is the original soundtrack on vinyl. Not something I needed, but it was included in the lot, and I was happy to grab it. So let's start with some stuff we're familiar with here. So we got ourselves another GP7. I think. This has a little extra bit here at the bottom that mine didn't have. There's a little thing that goes around the nose plates. I don't know what that necessarily means. It might be just a slightly different model. Another spare GP7. Another thing that's just part of the lot and I grabbed it. I, mean, I didn't argue with it basically. I just accepted what was in the lot. Another MSA Comfo cap. Previous owner of this. I think they'd used it for a cosplay, so this looks like it's all nice and weathered up, or they just got one that was already beat to hell. But uh, yeah, this looks good. A pair of gloves for the original Harry Warden costume. So these are also pretty weathered and gross looking, which is great. All right, getting some stuff that's new for this. We have a uh, mining belt here. It's probably way too small to fit me, but it's something the costume requires. So I'll figure something out for this. Yeah, I say costume. I don't know if I'm ever actually gonna wear this stuff. I just 
thought it would be cool to have. Okay, I was curious about this. This was listed, and not only was a photo of it in the listing. So he said there was a, I think, breathing canister is how he listed this. I'm assuming this was supposed to be kind of like the remake Harry Warden style. It's got like a military style pouch here on the back, which looks really cool, and then it's like strapped in here. It's a big, heavy bottle, much heavier than the one that I used. This is Universal Canister. It looks like it might be military. It's the Department of the Interior logo on it. I mean, this is cool looking. This is really cool. This is not, I don't even know if this is in camera half the time what I'm doing here. I was wondering if he's going to have one of the MSA self rescue in there, but uh, I have one, so it doesn't matter. Uh, more regular belts. Another regular belt attached to a Kohler wheat light, and uh, I think he said this one actually worked. Let's see. He also said you need a charge, so I don't even know if I'm using this right. Whatever, we'll figure that out later. But this, I was wrong. I had thought the model that I got was accurate to the film. It was the basically the same one used on the vintage costume, but in red. But it turns out, I looked closer at the film, and uh, it actually has these blacktop ones. I think it has the square windows on it. Lamp looks pretty similar. I want to say it's a little bigger than the old school one but yeah it's a slightly different Kohler wheat lamp so this is actually the accurate one for the remake from what I can tell at least got a pair of coveralls these aren't gonna fit me for sure but they could be cool for a display or something okay I think we've gotten all the bullshit out of the way so we are ready for the real reason big piece that I wanted out of this set go. It's the uh, original mask stuffed full of uh, fat and peanuts. So this is the Chemox Rebreather using the original My Bloody Valentine. Not a gas mask, it's a rebreather unit. Usually when you find them on eBay, you just find the full sets. They come in a big trunk and all this stuff, stuff I didn't need. But they're getting harder and harder to find from what I can see. They're not that easy to come by. And I had found a seller for one a week earlier than I found this. And uh, that seller just kind of strung me along and eventually was like, oh, I can't find it, which is total BS because it's a giant crate he was selling the full kit and there's no way he couldn't find a full kit but basically this there's a different nose on it when you see it in package this part I guess unscrews and there's like different layers in here so you just bring out this grill forward a lot of them also have like a mono eye instead of the two eyes which is obviously incorrect We've got the one length of hose down here uh, it looks to be the same kind of gas mask hose that is used for the remake or just kind of a generic gas mask hose so I'll add that in like another length of it because this is a pretty short bit here this tube also when you get it if you have the original it would be facing this way with this facing forward like that part so you'd have the two hoses coming down either side that go into whatever it is you know whatever the attachment is for all this so i need to check the reference i think this might need to get cut off i think this might stop about here which would make sense with somebody wearing this for it not to be poking into their chin because obviously it's not meant to be like this initially. My other cool bit here is this little aluminum piece on the side. From what I've seen, some of them don't have this. I don't know if it's something he added later. It doesn't look like it. It looks to all be machined in one part, so either he got a reproduction bit, which does look a little shinier than the rest, so I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, that's it's pretty cool that it has that detail, so that's neat. But yeah, I'm super psyched. I am thrilled, so I can't wait to get this on the mannequin head take a closer look at it at all. I had briefly tried on the GP7 when I got it as well. Oh man, my voice sounds weird in here. I gotta say, this is a pretty comfortable uh, mask if you were gonna cosplay wearing this thing. It ain't bad, your visibility is pretty good. Of course, it's fogging up as I talk, but uh, I have a solution for that if I do wear this as a costume at a long point. You actually have a really good range of visibility. I'm used to Jason masks where you're very tunnel visioned into what you're doing. And with this, the lenses go way out to the side. I have like peripheral vision out to about here, which isn't bad at all. For any kind of horror costume, I mean, I guess as a practical purpose as opposed to some of the other stuff, but uh, I'm gonna whack the tripod with the hose. Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, it's so weird. I can hear my voice rattling out through this part. <laughs> And then I think this part, because it's, you know, I said there's multiple layers in here that come loose, I guess it's, I can hear that rattling as I talk. Like, I think that's, yeah, that's something elsewhere, maybe in here. Something somewhere is rattling as I talk, and it's really 
good. So I made the needed mods to the uh, self-rescuer. So here's the bottom part, paint that flat black. Similar to what I did with the canteen for the remake one. And then the uh, the clips that hold it together I painted, except I left this part silver. This one was like red paint that was chipping off and then the chrome underneath. And it's hard to tell in the movie if this part's painted or not, but I really like the look of this and the kind of natural weathering to it so i just wanted to leave that part as is and then just painted the rest black and then on the top part here i had to drill a hole here in the side that was a bigger pain in the butt than i had anticipated so the idea i don't have one handy but the hoses that or the spare gas mask hoses the connectors have this little fitting inside that basically plugs into the tube and the video I watched said that they had taken that, drilled out a hole here, and stuck theirs through. It's kind of a big hole to put that through. It's about a one and an eighth inch hole you have to drill. And honestly, I tried a couple different drill bits. I tried the hole saw bit. I tried, I had like a 28 millimeter bit, which is like 1.1 something inches. It's really close to one and an eighth. But none of it really worked. I tried taking a Dremel to it and boring it out after I got like, I got a three quarter inch hole and then I really didn't have anything bigger until that large drill bit. So I tried boring it out with a Dremel and it just ripped off the sanding bits. So it was just a pain and eventually I gave up and I went with the PVC pipe that I used internal to the hoses. So that is hose clamped in here from the one side and then I built up like a thick wall of electrical tape for the hose to slide over and make a secure connection. On the hose here, I did a similar thing. I took a piece of the same PVC pipe, wrapped it so that it was thick enough to fit over here, and then I electrical taped the outside because that's kind of what it looks like in the film. I'll try to do a little better research and figure out exactly what they did to hold them together, but that was the closest thing in look I could figure out. So I'm going to reassemble this guy and then we'll get it plugged in. All right, so I've already put it behind the thing, so now it's a pain in the butt to see, but basically got the hose connected up there whole thing clamped back together you can see the red little buckle on top yeah it's pretty much set <laughs> Damn it. i'll have to figure that out in a minute get it to sit better so definitely some weathering work to do here this uh this hose is much cleaner than the one i got from lithuania so i uh, need to make the match a little bit in the weathering whether i clean this one a bit or i dirty this up we'll see i don't know i'm, I'm so hesitant to cut that part off like I'm 90% sure it needs to be done. I'm going to go back and watch the movie again, make super sure that it needs to be cut, but uh, I think it needs to be cut. So I'll do that when, when I'm ready. But overall, the display is pretty much set. It's really not anything else I need. So that is it for these displays, at least for now. As I kind of mentioned, with this lot that I bought, I have a lot of parts to start moving towards making an actual costume for the original. And I really think that's gonna happen now because I've got enough of it that I can move forward with doing that. But these were super fun to put together. About a year ago, I put together a Hobo Myers costume from Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. And I had a blast searching for pieces that were either what they used for the original film or something that was very very close that would work for that costume and it was just kind of a fun like horror scavenger hunt so doing this doing the research getting you know looking at the movie reference looking at what other people have done to put their costumes together it was a lot of fun i know these aren't perfect i'm sure there's things that even i don't know are wrong on them right now but right now they're as close as i'm able to get them and i think they make some really great displays definitely need some tweaking definitely need to do a little work uh, especially i just realized how badly uh this guy's sagging here on the left kind of falling off the mannequin head there but it was just a phenomenal fun experience to put these guys together the original mask has been a bit of a holy grail item of mine for a while and i'm just thrilled to have it in my collection now and even though i think almost everybody would agree that the remake version is inferior to the original in almost any way the remake does have a cool look it is definitely a cool looking mask I like seeing kind of the elements they went with to get that thing to look the way it does. And it was surprising how true to the original it was in terms of the equipment it used, like the helmet and the lamp and all that. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.